In this video, we discuss total dual integrality. Let's immediately give the definition. A system of linear inequality Ax less than or equal to b is said to be totally dual integral, or TDI in short, if for every objective function Cx such that the linear program max Cx over Ax less than or equal to b has a finite optimum, the dual of this linear program, which is minimize yb such that ya equal to c and y greater than or equal to zero, admits an integral optimal solution. The first thing that I want to point out and make clear is that this definition of TDI-ness is not applied to polyhedra, but to system of linear inequalities. Now, of course, your first question would be why are we interested in total dual integrality, as it seems to be a quite complicated definition. This is why I want to immediately show to you that not only we have already encountered a system that is a totally dual integral, but we also essentially use this property to prove the integrality of a polyhedron. So let's go back for a minute to our spanning tree polytope. In theorem 4.25, we showed that the spanning tree polytope is described by this system of linear inequalities. Now, how did we prove this? In our proof, we used the Kruskal's algorithm to come up with an optimal solution to the linear program associated with the system of linear inequalities, and such a solution was the characteristic vector of a maximum spanning tree. But how did we show that the solution given by Kruskal's algorithm was indeed optimal for this linear program? Well, what we did is the following. We constructed the dual to our problem star, and we gave a feasible solution to the dual, y star. So at this point, we had a feasible solution x star to the primal, given by Kruskal's algorithm, and a feasible solution y star to the dual problem. Then we used complementary slackness to show that x star was optimal to the primal and y star was optimal to the dual. So now let's go back to our definition of TDI-ness. In fact, the arguments that we used in the proof of theorem 4.25 shows that our system star is in fact TDI. In fact, let's consider once again the definition of TDI-ness. From the definition of TDI, we should pick a vector c, such that the linear program max cx such that x satisfies star as a finite optimum. And this linear program is precisely the one that we were considering in the proof of theorem 4.25. Now, based on the definition of TDI, we need to take the dual to this linear program. And again, in the proof of theorem 4.25, we exactly constructed such a dual problem. Now, to check that the system star is in fact TDI, we need to show that the dual has an optimal integer solution. And this is exactly what we've done in the proof of theorem 4.25. In fact, you can see here the dual solution that we defined. We had y s star equal to zero, then we had y v star equal to c e n minus 1, and this is an integer number because c is an integer vector, and then we had y s i star defined as c e i minus c e j, and once again this is an integer number because both c e i and c e j are integer. So in particular we have shown that the system star describing the spanning tree polytope is in fact TDI. However, in theorem 4.25, we didn't care about TDI-ness, we only wanted to show the integrality of the polyhedron described by star. So what is now the link between TDI-ness and integrality of a polyhedron? This is the link given by theorem 4.26. Let's read the statement. Let Ax less than or equal to b be a TDI system and b be an integral vector. Then the polyhedron given by Ax less than or equal to b is integral. 
So this is exactly the missing link. If we now go back to the spanning tree polytope, we have now understood that the system star is TDI. Now the right hand side of all these constraints is integer. And this is because cardinality of S minus one and cardinality of V minus one are always integer numbers. And therefore theorem 4.26 now implies that the spanning tree polytope is an integral polyhedron. So essentially we could have proven that the spanning tree polytope is integral using the concept of TDI-ness and the theorem 4.26. Now let's briefly prove our theorem 4.26. To prove it we will use the theorem 4.1 part 4 which says that to prove that the polyhedron is integral everything you need to do is prove that for every integral vector c for which the linear program max cx such that ax less than or equal to b is finite, we have that the optimum value of this linear program is always integer. So let's pick such an integral vector c and let's denote by zc the maximum of this linear program, which is by assumption a finite number. Now we can easily prove that zc is always integer and we can do so using duality. In fact, the dual to our maximization linear programming problem is minimize yv such that ya is equal to c and y is non-negative. From our TDI assumption, we know that this dual problem has always an optimal solution y that is integral. So the optimal value will be y times b, which is an integer number because y is integral and b is an integral by assumption. Now from duality, we know that the optimal value of the primal, which is our zc, is equal to the optimal value of the dual, which is our yb that we just understood that is integer. So zc is integer as well. And from theorem 4.14, we conclude that P is an integral polyhedron. Now theorem 4.26 is in a way the most important theorem about TDI-ness that we're going to discuss for now. But I still want to tell you some more facts about TDI-ness. So the first thing that I want to stress once again is that the property of being TDI is a property of a system of linear inequalities and not of a polyhedron. So don't get confused about this. In particular, you could have the same polyhedron defined by two different system of linear inequalities, such that one of them is TDI and the other one is not. In fact, you can break the TDI property even just by scaling one inequality, as you can see in exercise 4.23. The other important heads up that I want to give you is that the theorem that we have just seen is not an if and only if. Namely, there are integral polyhedra given by a system AX less than or equal to B where the system is not TDI, even if both A and B are integral. One final interesting property that I want to talk about is that any integral polyhedron can always be represented by a TDI system whose coefficients are all integer. In other words, if you have an integral polyhedron given by a system that is not TDI, you know that you can always come up with a different system representing the same polyhedron such that this new system is TDI and with integer coefficients. This fact follows from theorem 4.27 which is stated here. And actually, the theorem 4.27 tells you something more general than this. It says that if P is a rational polyhedron, then there always exists a TDI system AX less than or equal to B with A integral such that our polyhedron P is given by AX less than or equal to B. Note that in this statement so far, we didn't assume that P is integral. So this holds for any rational polyhedron. On the other hand, if P is also integral, then the vector B can be chosen to be integral so that both A and B in the TDI system are integral. 
We will not prove theorem 4.27. And for now, this is everything I want to tell you about total dual integrality.